AI is intrinsically fallacious. Its legitimacy as a field rests on the false premise that building intelligence can be a feasible endeavor. But since intelligence is subjective, it's not a pursuable goal for engineering. Now, I'm pretty concerned about how widely this is misunderstood, and I even released a piece called AI is a Big Fat Lie. In this video, I'll dismantle the logical fallacy that is AI. By giving the name artificial intelligence to a field of engineering, you're saying we're going to build intelligence. But you can't succeed because you've set a subjective goal. With no objective benchmark by which to evaluate the thing you're trying to build, how can you keep the construction going in the right direction? And how could you ever know if and when you've successfully built it? I know that sounded like a rhetorical question, but let's try to actually answer it in a few ways in order to show that ultimately there is no satisfactory answer. Okay, let's see. To set an objective benchmark of intelligence, you could pick some difficult problem, a task that seems to require human level capabilities, such as driving a car, recognizing human faces, mastering chess, or conquering the TV quiz show Jeopardy. But now that computers can do these tasks, they don't seem so intelligent after all, in the full meaning intended by the term AI. Everything a computer does is just mechanical and well understood, and in that way, mundane. Once the computer can do it, it's no longer so impressive and loses its charm. The late computer science pioneer Larry Tesler suggested with due irony that we define intelligence as whatever machines haven't done yet. This paradox, which renders AI literally unachievable, is known as the AI effect. So, well, instead of benchmarking it by capabilities, we could instead benchmark it by its human likeness, by how human it seems to be. If a computer's behavior is equivalent to a human, surely it would qualify as intelligent. After all, as they say, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, so that's the idea behind the famous Turing test for machine intelligence. If a system consistently fools people into believing it's human, it passes the test, for example, by responding to questions in a chat room-like setup. But the benchmark of passing the Turing test also turns out to be a moving target since we humans continually become wiser to the trickery used to fool us. If you set up a Turing test experiment and your chatbot does indeed fool a bunch of human subjects, that's pretty impressive but is ultimately an arbitrary benchmark that won't keep us satisfied for long. The next round of test subjects will have figured out a way to defeat it. And passing the Turing test also misses the mark because there's limited value or utility in doing so. If AI exists, certainly it's supposed to be useful. So if you're trying to engineer intelligence, you're pursuing an ill-defined moving target. This was the hard learned lesson of a previous generation of AI researchers in the 1970s. In that era, rather than dreaming that machine learning would take us there, they relied largely on introspection, when you think about how you think. Then they try to encode the mind's operations as rules or other formalisms. This was sometimes called expert systems. That's cool and everything, but introspection ultimately tells us precious little about what's going on in there. The mind seems to be too complex to understand itself. So, since we can't soundly define AI based on what ability it demonstrates, nor can we define it based on whether it seems human-like, in the end, AI is most commonly defined by how it functions, what methodologies it employs. That is to say that you're working in the field of AI if you're using machine learning, expert systems, natural language processing, speech recognition, computer vision, or robotics. Those are categorized as part of the field of AI. I guess these are the parts you need in order to cobble together a robot. It's brain, mouth, ears, eyes, and body. But clearly, just because a system employs one or more of these methods, it doesn't automatically mean it qualifies as intelligence. But that really is, in everyday use, the most concrete working definition of AI. 
So it's not about the system you've built, it's about which department of the university you do your research in. I'm all like, oh, you're on the fourth floor? Cool, AI. However, that definition that's most common in practice is rarely the definition that's actually given. It ain't glamorous enough. We need a more cosmetically satisfying, lofty definition. The most commonly stated definitions actually just boil down to smart computer. Now, I must warn you, do not look up self-referential in the dictionary. You'll get stuck in an infinite loop. And many definitions are even more circular than smart computer, if that's even possible. They just flat out use the word intelligence itself within the definition of AI, like intelligence demonstrated by a machine. AI defies definition. Putting your finger on it is an unresolvable conundrum. It's a fuzzy buzzword, a fuzzword, as they say, which is a real problem if you're trying to, like, do science. Since it's a subjective concept, intelligence is not a pursuable goal for engineering. By the way, these problems with AI also apply to the term cognitive computing, a closely related or possibly identical field that also pursues a subjective goal involving notions about how humans think.